Hello, I'm Bill Fricks, Chairman and CEO of Newport News Shipbuilding, and welcome to a Navy Christmas. Joining me today are six of the company's master shipbuilders, so-called because each of them has more than 40 years' experience in building ships. Many helped to build the John F. Kennedy and have worked on every carrier since. These master shipbuilders, myself, and everyone at Newport News send their thanks to you, the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps, for your outstanding service to our country. Have a wonderful holiday, and may God bless you and your families. Season's greetings. I'm Lori Dewey, Director of Operations for the Taco Bell stores here in Norfolk. Taco Bell knows and understands it's hard to be away from your loved ones during the holiday season. This is why we are proud to be a continued sponsor of the Navy Christmas. This program helps the men and women in uniform connect with their families. On behalf of the Taco Bell family, we'd like to wish you a happy holiday season and a wonderful new year in the millennium. Hi, I'm Michael Towns. I want to wish all our men and women in the military stationed overseas a wonderful holiday. I know you'd rather be home with your families, and I appreciate the special jobs you do, jobs that keep America strong. We at Hampton Roads Transit understand what it means to serve the community. HRT is proud to be a community partner, helping the families of our brave men and women overseas, helping bring all of us a little closer together. From our family to yours, happy holidays. Welcome to WVEC's Navy Christmas. Ever since 1986, when we first aired this show, the courage and dedication of these men and women has continually impressed us. This hour-long presentation will give you a glance at the challenges that affect both Navy personnel and their families back home. WVEC's commitment to the show has lasted through the troubled times of Kosovo and the Persian Gulf. And we're proud to bring yet another edition of Navy Christmas to you today. Merry Christmas from the Mediterranean. I'm Joe Flanagan aboard Big Number no. 5, the USS Bataan. Once again this year, thousands of Hampton Roads sailors and Marines will be on a long and lonely holiday deployment. We hope to bring them a little bit closer together in the next hour. It's a real people story. 13 News reporter Rebecca Schramm will be along to profile a family in Virginia Beach. And military expert Mike Gooding will be here. Mike will do a stateside support story, among other things. But we're going to begin with Velma Scaife on the day Bataan left Norfolk back in September. It was rainy, it was windy, it was downright miserable. It was as if the clouds opened up and cried all day long, just like a lot of people on this rainy September deployment day. I came out, even if I had to be, get, get soaking wet. I wanted to let him know that I'm here for him. And that's just a saying that I will always be there for him no matter what. And I support him in what he's doing because somebody has got to do it. It was September 15th, just before Hurricane Floyd hit Hampton Roads. The baton and her arg had to leave early. Families had to cut short their goodbyes. Not many made it to the pier. Well, 
I like to see my wife come down to the pit when uh, see me up. That's the uh, last pretty sight I see. That's the thing I want to remember the most. Willie Edwards works in hazmat control. He's thinking about his family this holiday season, especially 10-year-old Sean. I recently just heard, I got, I received an email, I heard Sean is sick, and uh, you know I am mostly concerned, and he's in my prayers, so keep me posted on his health. Yes, it was a rainy September 15th. Rain only added to the gloomy mood here side. Um, I don't like it. I mean, it's, it's a long time. They're going away for six months, so that's, that's a long time, but what can I say? Tamika's family was missing Olatunde. He works on the mess deck, and he wasn't feeling too good that day either. It's hard to explain, you know, because you're excited because you want to see these, you know, the new places you're going to, and at the same time, you're leaving, you're leaving behind your family. That's, that's, really, that's a hard part right there. It is the saddest day of the six-month deployment. Birthdays, holidays, and so many important moments will be missed, but there is an attitude that sees you through. This is looking forward for the next port and looking forward for the time you come home and thinking about all the good things and not pretty much most of the bad, not, not all of the bad things. Deployment days don't get any easier the longer you're in the Navy. Saying goodbye to friends and loved ones is the toughest day of all. <laughs> Three zero three three are the two birds that are going to launch for today's mission. on slot five down the nose at eighteen. Families aren't meant to be apart for a day, a week, let alone six months at a time. Once the baton arrived on station here in the Med. The men and women on board settled in to the daily routine of the ship. Flower, can you please check and see how much longer before they know I'm 3-0? Captain Kathy Osman is the air boss. They run the airport. Um, basically what we're doing is we're keeping the aircraft from hitting each other. We're keeping the deck sequence. We land only as many aircraft as we have spots available, and we get them all out of here on time. Launching Harriers and Helos, her mind is on her work. But on the human side, her mind is also on her children back home. On the human side, I've never been around for any of my children's first or second birthdays. Um, the difference is this time, for the first time in Norfolk, they're old enough to actually write letters. It's those little things a mom is around for that makes life difficult out here. Gosh, mom, the uh, teacher's being mean to me, or gosh, mom, look, I got all A's this time. That type of thing. It's missing the day-to-day -day growing of it. but. This is my sixth ship, and at this point, I can honestly say it's got to be my last ship. Make no mistake about it, Captain Osman works the tower with the attitude of a true professional. I guess the old saying of, we're here to defend the country may sound trite, but that's what we do, and that's what we're proud of doing. And my guys are good. She misses her two children, but she has every confidence that Mr. Mom back home is ready, willing, and able to hold down the fort. My husband is um, an engineer. So he goes about things in a very methodical way and everything's getting done. Um, I'm sure he's tired. He doesn't actually say that, but I can't imagine he's not tired because I know normally it takes both of us all evening to get ready for the next day. And um, I, I'm just really glad none of my clothes are in the laundry back at home right now. <laughs> now the air boss certainly knows all about the Mr. Mom syndrome back in Hampton Roads. Somebody else on board Baton who knows Mr. Mom syndrome is the chaplain. But because he's a minister, because he's a naval officer, because he's deployed, he understands what I'm going through out here. And I understand what he's going through being the one left at home because I've been there too. Ann Kreckelberg is an ordained minister, a wife and a grandmother, and a lieutenant commander who enjoys every day working as the chaplain on board Bataan. I love what I do. It's going to be very hard for me to leave Bataan. I've, I've been on this ship 42 months. I feel, um, I feel a great possessiveness. It's going to be hard to let go. We anticipate his birth, and we celebrate that on Christmas Day. Whether it's a flight deck service with Haifa Israel as a backdrop, or a one-on-one -on -one encounter, 
and places high value on faith at sea. You are forced into a position where you really have to lean on your faith and lean on God more than you would at home where you have the support of your church community, your synagogue, your family, your husband, your wife, whoever it is that is, is, is with you. Sailors and Marines form many families for support at sea. Chaplain Ann encourages it, knowing well the hardships some encounter. I was talking to a young woman the other day. She's a, an E3 and she has an eight-month-old daughter at home. And this is the first time she's ever left her. And it's very hard on her. Good morning. Good morning. Connecting with the spiritual side is what's kept Ann Kreckelberg in the Navy for 14 years now. She loves the people. Young sailors three years ago came as 19-year-old babies, and now they're second-class adults. They're just, they've grown into wonderful, wonderful people. And, and that's what's rewarding for me. Joe, through the years, as we've had the privilege of doing these Navy Christmas specials, we focused in large measure on the Norfolk-based aircraft carriers forward deployed overseas. But not this year. That's because the aircraft carrier over there this time is the John F. Kennedy out of Mayport, Florida. Still, there is quite a large Hampton Roads-based contingent in the JFK Air Wing. Four squadrons from Naval Air Station Oceana in Virginia Beach are assigned to Carrier Air Wing 1 aboard JFK this holiday season. One F-14 Tomcat Squadron VF-102, two F-A-18 Hornet Squadrons VF-A-82 and VF-A-86, and one E-2 Hawkeye Squadron VAW-123. It's not the first time the Kennedy and local pilots have been away from home at Christmas time. Far from it. Back in 1986, when WBEC-TV produced its very first Navy Christmas TV show, the JFK was the ship we focused on, deployed during the holidays in the Mediterranean Sea. Even then, we got a feel for the loneliness our Navy friends experienced as JFK crew members decorated a tree in the squadron ready room. You'd rather be home with your family decorating with them, and, uh, uh, you know, it, it builds your spirits, but then it also kind of lets your spirits down a little bit. Spirits were high that day back in May 1967 when the Kennedy was commissioned at Newport News Shipbuilding. With Mom Jackie and brother John John looking on, the late president's nine-year-old daughter Caroline did the honors. It took two whacks, but she got the warship properly christened and sent her on her way to active naval service. The ship's history has been long and noble these past 31 years. JFK has seen a number of hostile engagements most notably Operation Desert Storm. The ship launched more than 2,800 sorties and 114 strikes on Iraq, dropping more than 3.5 million pounds of ordnance. JFK is now on its 16th major deployment, but back in 86, during our first Navy Christmas show, one interview said it all. My thoughts are on home, my family, my wife, my kids. It's my first Christmas away from home. Now my thoughts are just back home with them. And now, ladies and gentlemen, in honor of the 14th annual Navy Christmas, the USS Baton proudly presents their version of the 12 Days of Christmas. On the first day of Christmas, our nation gave to me a Med Cruise in an LHD. Chris. 
Christmas my true love gave to me. Seven grunts of lifting. The eighth day of Christmas my true love gave to me. Eight bakers baking. On the ninth day of Christmas my true love gave to me. Nine of diagnosing. On the tenth day of Christmas my true love gave to me. Ten Moses Pipers. On the eleventh day of Christmas my true love gave to me. Eleven gunners gunning. On the twelfth day of Christmas my true love gave to me. Twelve heavenly voices. Eleven gunners gunning. Nine hours diagnosing. Eight bakers baking. Seven grunts of lifting. Six burners burning. Five nuts of mail. Four radar scopes. Three landing ground. Two. Med crews in an LHD. All right, my name is uh, Lieutenant J.G. Asbury, and I'm on the uh, USS Whidbey Island. And I would like to say Merry Christmas to myself because I will be home for Christmas. Yay! Hi, my name is Essen Two Shoulders. I'm on board the USS Whidbey Island, and I like to say hello and Merry Christmas to. Corey, Leticia, Wesley, Ashante, and Deontay, all my children. Merry Christmas! <laughs> It may be a holiday deployment, but the mission of this amphibious ready group is all business. The first is to be ready to support NATO and the National Command Authority in uh, Kosovo in the event that situation were to turn ugly again. Uh, we really are the ready reserve to go in and, and assist the forces that are there. There are some 2,200 Marines out here in the 22nd Marine Expeditionary Unit. Based at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, they would be the ones returning to Kosovo. And as the, as the warmer weather in the spring comes and they begin to renew those differences that they have, I would say that the forces there in Kosovo uh, will uh, begin to have their hands full again in, in, the, in this early spring. But right now we are monitoring that and they're, uh, they're holding their own as far as the multi brigade areas. Getting Marines ashore is the key for the ARG. 24 aircraft to get them ashore on a helibourne lift. We also have a well deck. Uh, that's our other primary means of uh, transport ashore. Three LCACs uh, that we can get them ashore at uh, speeds in excess of 40 knots. So, the white and the green are the friendly troops there that are uh, currently calling in and working those missions. And this indicates a naval gunfire ship that's standing by for a mission which we just received. Gotcha. Fire mission, target number Alpha Firetrot 000. On board Bataan, there is a strategic arms control center where Navy Blues and Marine Greens work hand in hand to coordinate ships and planes and onshore troop movements. So that could be supporting arms from an aircraft carrier. It could be supporting arms from a naval gunfire ship. It could be, hey, we're coming back, so all of a sudden our artillery and mortars are now gone. We need some sort of support. Support also comes in the form of the USS Shreveport and the USS Whidbey Island that make up the ARG with the USS Bataan. So each ship very different. Bataan, the large uh, flat top, so to speak, the flagship. Uh, most of the aviation assets are here. But the Mew is combat loaded across the other two ships as well. So it really takes three ships to uh, arrive in a hot spot to provide the Mew commander all of his equipment, all of his capabilities. Com Fibron 6 is the administrative end of this arc. And they become a part of Sixth Fleet over here in the Med. The other thing is that we serve uh, Sixth Fleet Commander Vice Admiral Murphy in his. Uh, theater engagement policy and, and strategy and the way we do that is we operate throughout the Mediterranean uh, in a series of exercises. Some see it as a job, some see it as a privilege, but all see it as a long, long way from home. What we do is important and the more I deploy and the more I come on over here and see uh, other countries, you know, there's a lot of people in the world right now that will have a uh, 
a safe and uh, happy Christmas. And a lot of it is due to uh, this ship, the other ships in the ARG, and the uh, sailors and marines on here. Perhaps the toughest part of a Navy deployment is leaving behind the people you love most. In this time of year, it's even tougher. We want you to meet Mike, who serves on the dock landing ship USS Shreveport. He keeps photos of his wife and five children close by. Half a world away in Virginia Beach, Beth and the kids decorate the Christmas tree. A snowman? A oh. snowman? Oh, oh yeah, put him on. Three-year-old Patrick is the youngest. Then there's Caitlin, who's five, and Emily, who's seven. Christina is 11 years old, and Jeff is 14. So you can imagine Mom has her hands full. Yeah. Okay. This is shaping up really nice. When he's home, he will help decorate the lights and um, put the Christmas tree up. He'll help wrap presents and things like that, and I have to do all that by myself, so it's tough. Hanging all seven stockings by the fireplace is easy enough. Okay, and there's Daddy. But the kids know Daddy won't see what's in his stocking until Christmas is long gone. Back in the Mediterranean, Mike reads a letter from home. It's letters like this that keep him going day after day. And the kids get letters from Mike, too. This one is accompanied by a box of Christmas presents. Yours? Yes. Yes. What did you get? Mommy. That's for Jeff. Let's see, Let's see what that is. Yeah. Oh, Emily. Emily gets a doll from Spain. Mommy gets a bracelet. Mommy, look. Christina gets a beaded necklace, Caitlin gets a porcelain box, Jeff gets a soccer scarf, and Patrick gets a sheriff's gun. Everyone happy? Yeah! As happy as they can be, knowing Dad can't be there. I wish he was here with us Christmas, and I know he, he wants to be too, and it's got to be hard for him. I miss, like, the, like, after dinner when he used to play, with us, play around with us and wrestle a little bit. Um like his jokes that he used to joke around with us and just him being here. On Christmas Day, I just feel really sorry for him being alone and not with his family on Christmas. And we always say, at least we have each other. So we gave them a chance to send some holiday wishes overseas. Happy holidays, Daddy. We love you and miss you. To Beth, my wife, my kids, Jeff, Christina, Emily, Caitlin, and Patrick. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. I love you, I miss you very much, and we'll be home soon. I love you. I love you. Merry Christmas, Daddy. On Shreveport, thoughts of family for the Bickles this holiday season. Aboard the landing dock ship Shreveport, there's always one story that's fun to tell. That is life aboard the LCU. They live down below. The LCU sits in the well deck, waiting for the call to deliver men and machines to the beach. A strand is now being held in the wardroom. There are 11 crewmen on board, and they sort of live in their own little world, their own little cramped world down here in the well deck. Well, uh, considering the, my height, uh, it, I feel kind of cramped. I've banged my head many times and I've padded the areas on the craft uh, that need the cushion because I've got some nice scars at the top of my head. It's not quite like a submarine, but one look here in the birthing areas and you get the picture. One look in all areas around the vessel and you get the picture. It's, it's nice. Uh, small pond, less people. It's, it's we're like a family. You also get the picture as you watch our LCU maneuver its way into the well deck on this day leaving Haifa, Israel. The wind and the tides and the movement of the mothership can make driving very challenging. Throttles are controlled from down here. The main rudder can be, can be controlled from here and up on the con. A single engine powers an LCU. 
Creature comforts include a washer dryer and one cook to serve 11 crewmen. That's right, it's like cooking at home. I don't have to make nice and stuff, so you can make it to order how they like it. Hey, why, baby? It's a time-consuming evolution sometimes when the LCU offloads Marines and equipment. The least fun of serving on the LCU would be pulling in from a hard day's work, 20 hours or so, and putting out bull chains. The most beautiful thing about it is getting the guys to the beach, getting everybody off safely, and getting them on their way to do their jobs. It's life on an LCU. The best part is, uh, like I say, you're a little family. Worst part is, uh, I can't think of any worse parts. From Street Boy Engineers, happy holidays, happy the roads. Hey! From the Marines who are the Wimpy Island, happy holidays, happy the roads. Hoorah! As we celebrate this joyous holiday season, I'd like to thank each of you for your role in making 1999 another great year for our Navy. Though the demands have been many, and the pace of operations has been high around the globe, you've carried out your incredible responsibilities with great skill and enthusiasm. So as we celebrate this special season, take some time to consider the difference you have made to our Navy and be proud of what you've done. And let's all give thanks to our shipmates who are deployed, standing the watch out forward. Garland and I wish you and your loved ones all of the blessings of the season. We're proud to serve alongside each of you. Keep up the great work and have a safe and happy holiday. Thank you, Navy. For hundreds and hundreds of Hampton Roads families, the holidays are not an especially happy time. With fathers, sons and husbands, wives, daughters and mothers all deployed overseas thousands and thousands of miles away. Still, the community is doing what it can to help those here at home cope. One of the best events year in and year out is the USO show at Naval Station Norfolk. This year was the seventh annual production. It's for family members whose loved ones are deployed and their handmade signs said it all. I love him and I miss him and he, he plays grasshopper with me and he, and he laughs with me. We have a good time together. Six-year-old Taylor Curry's daddy, Bruce, is commanding officer of the USS McFall, which is underway this Christmas. The Curry family wouldn't have thought of missing the USO show. Well, it built maybe some honor. We get to see each other, and we know that we're not the only family who's going to be without um, a loved one at Christmas time, and um, I think that builds unity. It's, it's a good thing. A very good thing for some folks who aren't having a very good time without the ones they love. It's hard, but I work at Naval Portsmouth Hospital, and so I have a, a good support system there, and I'll be working a lot, so I'm pretty, you know, secure with him being gone, but I love him very much, and I miss him a lot. Tough going through the holidays with your son being overseas? Yes, it is. Yes, it's a um, little bit easier this time than the first time. The first time was rough, but um, being he's been, you know, stationed down here for the last two years, it's been a little easier but um, it's always hard being away from your kids <laughs> on the holidays. But if there's any good news, it's that they aren't having to go through it alone. The USO makes sure of that. I have a son. Um, I've been in the military for 28 years, been deployed away from home during Christmas, and when I see these kids, the smiles on their faces and the glint in their eyes, it makes you recognize what, what the holiday season's really all about, but more importantly, that, that the military is such a caring and loving family. No matter what happens, no matter what your environment is, we all come together, whether it's adversity or whether it's a celebration for Christmas, and, and it just makes you feel good that uh, we're all part of this great family. And here was something to shout about, the annual Norfolk Holidays in the City Grand Illumination Parade. Thousands of people lined the streets of downtown Norfolk to celebrate the season. Amid the merriment, though, some paused to reflect on our military neighbors and friends who won't be with us this year, and they offered them some special holiday greetings. We are sincerely thankful that you're there for us. We wish you were home and have a safe and happy holiday. God bless you and our thoughts and prayers are with you. I've done that before. My husband's been away for Christmas. It's very difficult and hopefully the community will come together for your families and be with them. Thank you. We appreciate it very much. Hope you guys have a good holiday. Happy holidays.
we're grateful that they're there. We're grateful that they do the type of job that they do. And my wish for them is that they will remain safe. God will bless them and return them to us safely. Some illuminating words to be sure. Saturday night in beautiful downtown Barcelona, Spain. Spaniards by the thousands turn out to ramble on La Rambla. It's the festive fiesta season. Feliz Navidad for American sailors and Marines from Spain to Italy. And this is just another Liberty Call. Now what better way to see Barcelona than on the upper deck of the tourist bus, or as our Spanish announcer calls it, the boost touristic. Now if only we were here seven years ago for the Olympics, that would be something. This city is something regardless of when you're here. And for sailors and Marines from the USS Bataan, it was a nice break. Oh, it means a lot. Uh, it allows us to relax and uh, decompress a little bit from uh, underway period. Uh, it allows us to see a large part of the world that you don't normally get to see if you're uh, stuck down in engineering or, in my case, uh, sitting inside an uh, air-conditioned space in, in uh, the middle of the ship. They were dancing in the street when a few of us made our way around. This is the Catalonia region of Spain, where the accent is a little different, and the weekend routine this time of year is lively and active. The Basilica de Barcelona dates back to the 12th century. On this day, the multitudes flock to stroll inside and soak up the centuries of artwork and spiritual inspiration. It was quite a moment. Well, I enjoyed being off the boat because you get to visit other countries, the culture, uh, like I said, the food, uh, the people, you know, everybody. Just the culture in general actually is different from America. We roam the streets and experience the charm of this Mediterranean city. From the paella to the people, the Spanish know how to live. Oh, did I mention the siestas? Sailors and Marines will be in places like Italy this holiday season. I uh, plan on seeing the Vatican for Christmas Eve and then uh, take a little bit of liberty uh, for New Year's and just relax and get away from everything. This marks the first six-month deployment for the Marine Amphibious Assault Ship Bataan. We thought we'd give you a quick tour from the forecastle to the fantail. The forecastle is about getting business done. I usually tell my new people that it's organized chaos. There's a lot of screaming and yelling going around. Get right out there. Go that way. Go that way. Get out there and keep both lines. But the work gets done. We get the ship underway or we get the ship moored. Martha loves it here in the forecastle. Not far from here is the ship's gym. With so many Marines on board, this place gets a heavy workout. You usually find someone in here anytime, day or night. And on the flight deck of this 844 foot long ship, you find flight ops going on nearly any time, day or night. This is the bridge where they steer and navigate the baton. It's 844 feet long, 120 feet wide, and rises over 200 feet above the water. Now, one of the places they defend the baton is just down here. What you're on right now is the 04 level, the forward missile uh, NATO Sea Sparrow launcher. What we have here to our right is what we call the RAM system. It's a rolling airframe missile launcher. And behind us over here, we have the NATO Sea Sparrow system. These systems are utilized on board the Bataan for self-defense systems. Okay, and then what do we have up top on the radar? Up top, uh, the white R2-D2 up there is your SeaWiz system. And behind that, where the clamshell is, you have what we call the Mark 95 radar director. And above that, we have the various radar air sensors that we utilize to help tell us what's around the ship. 
someone's always in the kitchen on Bataan. At least it seems that way on the mess decks. They'll feed 2,000 folks in here each day. And there are four other dining areas around Bataan. Doesn't it get overwhelming feeding all these troops on the mess decks? No, not really. We have approximately about 300 seats, and we feed each meal about three hours long. They get about 20 minutes to sit down and go ahead and eat and get up and leave so somebody else can take, take their seat also. So what did Mary Wycliffe have cooking in the kitchen on this day? Well, this is going to be chicken cacciatore. Tonight is going to be for dinner. we got to start it early because we got a lot of people to feed. Go down a few more levels, and you are in snipe country. 38 engineer types who power baton. Two main engines, each one rated at 35,000 shaft horsepower. Five ship service turbo generators, each one of those rated at 2,500 kW, 4,000 amps. There's the hangar bay where they keep and maintain the aircraft. There's the CIC room where they monitor and control friendly and unfriendly aircraft. And there's also an extensive medical department. Bataan has enough room for 100 beds if needed and some state-of-the-art technology. We no longer take x-rays on film. We're using plates that act like a computer disk. And we take the image from that plate, we stick it in a machine, and it creates a digital image on computer. So we can use that to read x-rays. We end our tour below the fantail where the well deck meets the water. They were bringing in an LCU in a stern gate marriage. And then we put the um, LCU in position with our position line from each wing wall. And from there, we put our bull chains. We we'll keep the LCU in position while we go ahead and transfer the vehicles from the ship or off the ship. They can drive the vehicles off the LCU or they can bring the whole LCU in. If we're going to bring an LCU in, we would ballast the ship down. That's going to bring it all the way up in there. Go ahead, ballast it down, bring it in, lock her in place, and then ballast back up and pick the LCU up on its belly. Life on Bataan. Unless you're the Ever Ready Bunny or nuclear powered, ships cannot just keep going and going and going. About once a week, they pull up to the full service gas station at sea for an underway replenishment. In this case, the USNS ship Pawtuxent would check under the hood, kick the tires, and fill her up. Fill up the USS Bataan and the landing dock ship Whidbey Island. An amazing evolution at sea. 307 at 8 knots, sir. 307 at 8. Now, on this particular unwrap with the Patuxent alongside, the Whidbey Island will take on 125,000 gallons of fuel and some 46 pallets of supplies. And as we found out, some extra special gifts from back home. Hello, gentlemen. With a little help from Santa and a sea bag. I believe Chief Matt gets two of them. Chief Gugliano got a homemade and handmade sweatshirt. See, there's Dominic and Cameron and little Morgan who was three months old a couple days ago. Daddy loves you. I love you too, Monica. Now, a guy named Whipple got a pack of Charmin, appropriately enough, while the chief near him got the Y2K brand. Y2K because when the lights go out, it's guaranteed to glow. Thanks, sweetie. You don't, you don't realize if I really needed this bad. Oh, yeah, Mr. Whipple got something else, too. Just my size, yes. Let's have me doing a little fishing. Matthew Cruz is set for a med deployment now, don't you think? All right, gentlemen, here are some more presents. Pariosa Wallace, this is for you. Thank you. Uh, Christmas cheer was breaking out all over Whidbey Island. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Wrestling. <laughs> Mike Sheffield got his wish, and so did Richard Wallace. Well, sort of. Goldberg trunks. Is he your favorite? No, actually, I like Stone Cold Steve Austin, <laughs> but uh, Goldberg will do. <laughs> Stone Cold was in the next box. Home always knows the perfect present. Wishing you all the joys of a Merry Christmas and a year of happy days. Antonio Marybell got a piano from home. 
while Lieutenant J.G. David Dwyer got one of those stress reliever toys. The CO, Brian Barrington, got what he already has, a ship. Now, Master Chief Mark Butler says he never knows what to expect from home. As he rooted through his box, he found a Bah Humbug hat and the most mouth-watering fruitcake you'll ever see. His wife soaks them in an orange glaze. Mm -mm. First Christmas, first Christmas she fixed me a fruitcake. She's been fixing me a fruitcake every year. One year she even fixed me two. So, these are, these are delicious though. Yes, Command Master Chief Butler had his cake for a song and a dance. Hey, another Bah Humbug Christmas from the middle of the Mediterranean. Thanks a whole bunch, Hampton Roads. <laughs> Hi, my name is uh, NC1 Bastidas from the Woodby Island. First, I would like to take the time to thank Channel 13 for doing this for us, and I'd like to wish everybody back home a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, especially to my beautiful girlfriend, Kim. And uh, it's funny we were talking about Christmas and how much we've thought about getting married and I realized that I've never really have asked you to marry me so I'm taking the opportunity now in front of the millions of people that hopefully are going to watch this to ask you to marry me. Uh, please make me the happiest sailor in the whole Navy and say yes. Uh, wish you a Merry Christmas. I hope you do the same thing for me by telling me yes and I'll be home soon honey and uh, our wedding will be the best wedding ever. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everybody. Bye. Whitby Island wasn't the only ship receiving gifts. The Bataan support group had an idea for the kids. It's easy. Just take a picture. Take a frame. Just stick Their idea was to let children make a picture frame and send them to dads. I put some hearts on my sisters and, I, and mine. And I put some raindrops on mine. They glued and they cut and they put their hearts into their work. And uh, they have cut out different crafts where you can put whatever you want. There's circles and triangles. And I just wanted kind of basic hearts to let our husband know and daddy know that we love him. And um, it's just really nice to have something like this for the kids. I think it's really important for them. While the popsicle frames hung on the wall, the kids also did a nice big banner for the ship, complete with messages from home. Hope you knew about this ahead of time, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> Now, the gifts were presented on the ship, and did they ever go over big? From dog photos to cat photos to daughter photos. Um, she just started pre-kindergarten, and this is Mackenzie. We call her Mac Mac or Macaroni for short. <laughs> this is my son Thomas, and he goes to Ocean View Elementary School. Uh, I love you. As these guys looked at the photos, the distance between home and here grew smaller, if only for a moment. It meant a lot to them, and it showed. It's great. I mean, I, we haven't seen, we've been gone for two months now. We haven't seen our family. And, I mean, it, it's just excellent. Matthew Klingensmith was thrilled. You know, it's going to make the holidays a little easier. You know, and they say the best gift you never get from your child is something that they made for you. And this is just really excellent. One by one, the popsicle frames were passed out and appreciated. This is my oldest daughter. Gina, she's 11, be 12 here in about three days. So I'll be wishing her a happy birthday soon. And this is my lookalike. Uh, he's probably a little more handsomer than me. <laughs> the banner was opened up, and it revealed many, many messages for the holidays. It, it, it means a lot to see their actual handwriting, oh, okay. see the messages sent. It was a simple gesture from home, but one that really hits home for the holidays. Uh, I think this is going to be real good for the holiday spirit, help lift the crew spirits. I know it's hard being away from home at the holidays when you'd rather be there with your family, but this is what we have to do out here. We're doing our jobs every day like we're supposed to. Now, they couldn't go without a thank you to the folks back home. To the Baton Support Group, thanks a lot. Yeah. Happy holidays. Woo! Being deployed during the holiday season of the year is just one of those unfortunate byproducts of being in the Navy. Everyone from the lowest ranking sailor to the highest ranking admiral knows that it could happen to him at some point in his career. Just ask the commander in chief of the Atlantic Fleet, Admiral Vern Clark. Yes, I sure have been deployed during holiday seasons a number of times in the 31 years that Connie and I have been uh, doing this. Uh, wh the way it feels is there's a sense of loneliness and there's a sense of sacrifice and, uh, and loss at missing these opportunities with families. 
there also is a sense of great satisfaction in, in what the individual is doing uh, on the point, forward deployed, uh, meeting the taskings of the, the National Command Authority. Uh, it's important that we emphasize and re-emphasize to people the importance of their personal contribution during a time like this. Admiral Vern Clark has been there, done that. He assumed command of the Atlantic Fleet September 17th, taking over from Admiral Paul Reason. The Sioux City, Iowa native is now in charge of 118,000 sailors and Marines, 186 ships, and 1,300 aircraft, and the entire Atlantic Ocean from the North Pole to the South Pole and everything in between. Clark says he knows firsthand of the heartache caused by deployments, especially during the holidays, and he feels their pain. Every family member must know, should know, how important this sacrifice is to our nation and to our Navy and our ability to maintain peace and stability throughout the world. What they are going through right now and their, the personal nature of their sacrifice is very much appreciated. We know it's difficult. I've experienced it myself. I can just, I want them to know how important it is and how much I appreciate what they're doing. Clark points out the one silver lining these days is modern technology and the ease it affords in keeping the communication lines open between sailors and loved ones on the other side of the world. Today every one of our ships deployed, every ship in our fleet has the ability to send email back and forth to one another. I remember well a deployment I had, a nine month deployment, uh, where I spent a, t a ten minute telephone call, cost me one fifth of my month's pay. We have made great progress, and we want the families out there to take advantage of every opportunity they have to share with their service member. And it's important to send these communications back and forth to their loved ones. I thank Channel 13 for their involvement in this effort. No, Admiral, thank you. Um, um, <laughs> we're starting my birthday party. Toy Story 2? Toy Story 2. Can you show two? Daddy how many fingers will you be? Can you show Dad? Three. I'm going to be three, Daddy. I'm going to be three, Daddy. All right. So I love you, Dad. I love you, Dad. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We carried a video with us to let Brett and Hunter here sit down and watch their families for a moment. They loved it. Daddy, whenever you want to hug, do you, um, do you hug the pillow that we made you the last time you were on a big trip? Yes, I do. <laughs> Brett went on to show us the pillow that daughter Haley was talking about. And um, Haley's learned to tie her shoe. That's a big milestone for Haley. And um, Jackson's been swimming, so we just trying to keep to our routine. That's that's what I try and do. Now Brent works as the mini boss in the tower, but at this moment everything just sort of stopped for him as he watched his kids. I think they'll be more excited by the fact that I get to see them on TV than anything else. You know? <laughs> Cassie and Haley and Jackson. We'll be missing Brett this Christmas. Well, it's, it's hard, but we always go home to family, and that makes it a lot easier to be around all their relatives so we can get his family around us. And we usually do make a videotape and send it home so he can see. But, uh... They spent an afternoon in the park to talk to Brett. Time flew as he watched. A couple times it made my heart stop. Uh, I, I felt a lot of joy and exhilaration. It was absolutely wonderful to see my kids and my wife. Um, Cassie looked great. Uh, not that I would have expected anything less, but it's just marvelous to get to see her. Hi, Daddy. Hi, Daddy. Hi, Daddy. In case you Daddy. wondered, the other family in the park that day was good friends with Brett's family. Their dad and husband was Hunter, watching the video with Brett. Well, Garrett's been doing great, hon, and um, I try to tell you what all he does, but you know, he has some teeth now, and um, he's rolling over. I think he's going to start crawling soon. I hate that you're not going to be here to see all that. But um, we're just keeping real busy with Shelby in school, and, and Garrett and I are getting some time together by ourselves. Hunter couldn't keep his eyes off his baby boy. His smile is it. That's awesome. Uh, I got some pictures of him, and in both in several, several pictures of him, he's really smiling, just huge. He's tickled himself. He's laughing so hard, and that, that's awesome. This is the first time Hunter and wife Brandy will be apart for Christmas. Um, I don't know if the ordinary person knows that we are away from our families for, for six months. Uh, most people don't have to worry about that problem in their marriage where they're always together and they get tired of being together. Uh, for us, we're always gone. Like Brett, Hunter couldn't get enough of watching his family on the screen, floating out here in the middle of the med. 
I, I didn't want to say anything because I was afraid I might miss, miss, you know, miss some words when I was trying to make sure I saw all the picture, and, you know, that I didn't, I didn't miss a, a hand wave or a, you know, or a, if he was smiling, I don't want to miss any of that. Blowing big kisses, give him the big eye. <laughs> Shelby sends you hugs and kisses, and um, I hope you have a wonderful Christmas. It's really going to be tough without you. Remember the first Christmas that I had without my parents? I cried the whole time, and I'll probably end up doing the same thing here. But luckily, we have I have these great kids to keep me company. Have a wonderful Christmas over there, Mediterranean Christmas, and um, take care of yourself. And we'll see you in March whenever you get back. I love you. Um, we miss you, and we love you, and I hope that you have a great holiday. And we will, of course, be thinking of you. And um, thank you for keeping in touch with us so well. It has meant a lot. And do you guys want to say Merry Christmas to Daddy? Merry Christmas. Yes. Say, I love you, Dad. I love you, Dad. OK, blow a kiss. Mwah. Hi, I'm Lieutenant JG Julia Harrington on USS Whidbey Island. I want to say hello to my husband, Greg, and Merry Christmas, and I love you. From Shreveport, Combat Cargo. Happy holidays, Hampton Roads. Liberty Call in Haifa, Israel. It's all about letting off a little steam. Uh, yes, very much. Uh, we, put in a, we had a long time here. We've been here for a couple of weeks now, and it's been a lot of fun. Although it's been a work in court, I think Israel really went out their way to show us a good time here. And I think the crew have really had a great time. When Norfolk-based sailors and Marines come to Haifa, Gila Gerzen, head of the USO here, always shows them a good time. Gila, Gila is a very hard worker. She, 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 she works really hard with us and everything like that, and she makes, she makes us really feel at home. They came out on the ships, they gave us roses when we, when we first got out here and everything like that, so it was a good time. And why does Gila do it? Because I think God bless us by having uh, the best of the United States. I don't have any doubt. And they taking care of this such a wonderful young men and women who are the peacekeeper. I call them uh, the sea and street ambassador of United States. And uh, they purify us. We feel better people after that. And I thank God for that. Families aren't meant to be apart for a day, a week, let alone six months at a time. Think of the families in Hampton Roads who are making this sacrifice this time of year. They are your friends and neighbors, and they deserve our support. All of us at WVEC-TV are proud to be a part of this Navy Christmas program. We thank you very much for watching and wish you happy holidays. On the 12th day of Christmas, my true love gave to me 12 heavenly voices, 11 gunners, gunning, 10 boatswains, fighting, 9 dogs diagnosing, 8 bakers baking, 7 grunts are lifting, 6 burners burning, 5 tons of mail, 4 radar scopes, 3 landing craft, 2 rescue helos, and a lady who's in an LHD. We hope you've enjoyed this presentation of WVEC's Navy Christmas. The military men and women who protect our shores give us the freedom to live safe and happy lives. This holiday season, let's not forget the true meaning of the holidays. So we celebrate with you and your family and wish you many happy returns. WVEC is honored to bring you this show and will continue to be here for the many men and women that serve in our nation's armed forces. Happy holidays from WVEC and thanks for watching Navy Christmas. Hi, I'm Michael Towns. I want to wish all our men and women in the military stationed overseas a wonderful holiday. I know you'd rather be home with your families, and I appreciate the special jobs you do, jobs that keep America strong. We at Hampton Roads Transit understand what it means to serve the community. HRT is proud to be a community partner, helping the families of our brave men and women overseas, helping bring all of us a little closer together. From our family to yours, happy holidays. As a Navy Christmas comes to an end, we here at Taco Bell would like to thank the men and women in uniform for their continued strength and selfless dedication. We realize the sacrifices are made for our country and ourselves. Our thoughts and prayers are with them throughout the holiday season. 
Whether you're on a ship far away or back here in Hampton Roads, Taco Bell would like to wish you and your family a happy holiday and a wonderful new year. Thank you for watching A Navy Christmas. Best wishes for a safe and happy holiday season from the welders at Newport News Shipbuilding. Happy holidays! The tugboat operators at Newport News Shipbuilding wish you smooth sailing into the year 2000. Happy holidays! <laughs>